Hey, you guys, this is Kelly Callahan, and I'm back with another episode of the Beauty Business Babes podcast. I'm so excited because we have Miss Maria Ramos here from the Money Making Esthetician. I want to thank you so much for being here. And for those of you guys who aren't a part of her group, you guys have to go on Facebook, the Money Making Esthetician. This woman has blown it up in such a short amount of time. So today we're going to be talking about influencers, collaborations, and how you can grow your beauty business. So Miss Maria, if you can do a quick introduction of who you are and what you're doing, we would love to hear more about you. Yes. So of course, my name is Maria and I am the creator and the admin of the Money Making Esthetician Group. I also have a day spa where I do facials and waxing. It's called the Beauty Plug by Maria. And I've been in the industry for, I believe, like seven years, but I've obsessed over it for like 10, 15 (laughs) years, you know, but I finally took that leap and I went to beauty school and paid attention, you know? That's really all you have to do. Pay attention, pass the boards, and then (laughs) everything else is really like the learning experience. At least that's what my experience was like I didn't I didn't feel like I learned much at aesthetic school to be honest but it is what it is so tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry so you were like thinking about this for about three years before you actually took the plunge and when you first started did you start off solo did you work with somebody how did that look so actually I went and got licensed right found out I was pregnant a week later no so I got licensed (laughs) Monday I had my job Friday Mm mm-hmm and then a couple of weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. Oh so I worked gosh. at EW European Wax Center for a long time. So I went back to work there because the money was better. I was so, I mean, I, you know this, you're so tired yeah. when you're pregnant. Oh yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> falling, I was like literally falling asleep everywhere anyway. So <laughs> then I took a year off to raise my daughter because the first year was pretty difficult, like a brand new baby. And then going in, I actually tried to go solo just two days a week. I found someone to sublease from and I was so bad. I was like, why am I not getting rebooks? I also hadn't done it in a minute. So that's when I went and applied to Brooke Williams. Mm -hmm. And at Brooke Williams is really where I got like the verbiage and the confidence. I learned like how to rebook client retention, massage, giving them information on retail. So like, that's where I really learned. Mm -hmm. And then obviously a ton of classes that I take in between, you know, and that's how I got in the industry, I guess. Yeah, I love that. So are you focused on at this point, you had been focused just on waxing? Is that correct? So I had to do waxing because at the time I went to Paul Mitchell and Pasadena, my teacher told me Brooke Williams won't hire you if you don't know how to wax. The path that I had put in my head was European Wax Center, Brooke Williams, a day spa, a med spa, and then I'm going to go solo. Okay. So I kind of wanted to mm-hmm. combine the med spa aspect and the day spa aspect and merge it into myself. But I knew that I wanted to learn because everybody talked about how amazing Brooke Williams learning is. It's like an extra, I think, three or four hundred hours that you have to do before you even touch a client. Wow. Oh my gosh. The intense, like we, you would have to test out every week. So That's it was amazing. like, I, knew- I love that I feel that's where my confidence really comes from and I also learned like the value of studying there Mm -hmm. I mean I still study a new class every week I'm pretty much the same way like I love to learn as much as I can like I went to aesthetic school not having to because spray tans obviously isn't regulated in many states California being one of them and I didn't have to do it but I was like I just want to learn more like I want to be the best spray tan trainer out there I need to learn about skin and it opened up other doors for me to do like lashes and I did try waxing and I did all these things that I realized later that it just wasn't for me so I just stuck with like spray tanning and lashes those were like my two favorite things but that's amazing so So you got all of this knowledge, you got it under your belt. And then did you ever end up working at the med spa? I did. Funny enough, I just left there this morning because I still friends with my (laughs) former boss. And I learned so much under her. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a person and I say this all the time. So when I went to European Wax Center, I worked like I owned it. Mm. Like this was like, this is my treatment room. Everybody's like, I would challenge myself to learn how to get do retail. Like, so when I went to the med spa, she really liked me because I worked like I owned it. Like I didn't just sit there. I was cleaning. I was folding. I was like, and so I feel like when she saw how much I was putting in, she was willing to put into me. Absolutely. So she, I mean, I learned clear and brilliant because she has a medical director. So she was like, even trying to take me to like it was cool sculpting university so many different things that she was like teaching me or even like she's like i just want you to learn because she saw how like passionate and hungry i was to be there so even like sitting in her treatment rooms and protocols and she was telling me about her budgets you know and like how to do things but during that time i was i kind of seen people on the side and i got this one big influencer 
who she's still my client. I just saw her Sunday. And her name was Augustina Fitness. Mm -hmm. And she comes in and she was like, this is amazing. Like, you need to go solo. Like, I can't believe you don't have your own business. Because it was out of my living room at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way it was positioned, it looked really pretty. It looked like, like my walls were black like that in the back. Mm -hmm. So an accent wall. And I had everything really clean. And I was only out of like my room, me and my daughter. So it was like really positioned really pretty. Also at the time, like you just have to get started somehow. And it's yeah. expensive. Mm -hmm. And so finally she was like sending me all her people so like she was like really great friends with the game he's a rapper mm -hmm. and you know she was like telling me all her friends whatever so finally it was a slum republic i went and i signed my lease and it was like let's just do it you know but then it was february 2020 i signed my lease oh wow so we course. all know what happened in march <laughs> why do i yeah. keep on hearing this story i swear so many women that i've interviewed have like a similar thing where it's like they started their business at this time or they had like this opportunity to get their own salon or whatever of course it had to be like february or march 2020 this is insane but because i got so much traction off of augustina mm -hmm. i had when one well i don't know it was lucky for me when one influencer came they all came yeah that's so cool it was really cool actually and they all messaged me so all of a sudden i'm getting all this traction on social media and they're like i want to come i want to come i want to come i had this one rapper's wife come to me in her engagement wild off of her i got like 10 appointments i was crazy but again it was she was referring me to people because i did a really good job and then covid hit so when covid hit and that's when you and i i first reached out to you mm -hmm. i just took it online and i was just like i had got the knowledge from brooke williams on how to verbally tell my clients what they need how they need it and really pay attention to them so i just took basically like if i was in the treatment room on social media and i was just always on there yeah and collab and i was like I had the idea that i want to do the group but i don't know because i like entrepreneurship and all the stuff so that's when i started thinking about okay look how can i continue to do collabs i was like i'm just going to reach out to like beauty business owners and see if they want to like teach girls which is when i reached out to you and we did our first one I'm yeah. sure i still have it mm -hmm. i had started the group and all my family was like you're wasting your time why are you doing that like focus on the beauty plug like here's Maria dreaming again. <laughs> I'm, I was really lucky to get a lot of mentors. Mm -hmm. Like, but it was because I was always there and they would see how like much I wanted to work. So they didn't have a problem mentoring me. Like, they didn't mm -hmm. think it was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. And I saw like there was so much need of the girls who were like, how do you start a business? How do you start a skincare line? And how do you do this? And backstory, I took a lash course while I was pregnant and it was the worst lash course ever. And I spent mm -hmm. $1,500. And that's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I learned nothing. I didn't know how to do lashes. I hated lashes. Learned that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And so my idea with the group is I'm going to find the best and bring them because I don't want anybody in the day and age now where there's so much information. Like if you spend a certain amount of money on a course, like you want a return. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of where the idea came. Yeah. So when she's talking about groups, she means Facebook group. So she, her Facebook group really exploded. And we'll get back to that in just a moment. But I want to circle back to something that I feel like a lot of women ask me. And they're like, how do you get influencers? And I know, Maria, you live in LA. Obviously, like it's going to be a lot easier for you than somebody who's like in the middle of Kentucky or something like that to get like somebody who is like famous or whatever. So when I say influencer, I don't mean somebody that has a million followers. When I say influencer, I don't mean like the Desi Perkins of of the world or like Beyonce. Okay. What I mean is like somebody who is influential within your community, right? So those are our influencers, at least in my mind. So how would you say that somebody that's like in the middle of Kentucky or Nebraska or whatever, how would you say would be maybe like the best way to find somebody to work with? Because it has helped you in your own business, as you stated, but I also think it can help somebody in those areas as well. So if it was me, it's funny that you say Desi Perkins because she was like my, I want you to come. And I'm, I was so close to getting her in, but she didn't come. So like, yeah, I um, actually went to school with Steven, her husband. <laughs> oh my God. I am obsessed with them. They're so yeah, cute. They are cute. I would actually reach out. So that's actually what I tell a lot of the girls because like, I don't do coaching. I want to say that 100%. But if someone sends me a DM, I'm always willing to hop in a call and like, brainstorm right kind yeah. of just because i find you're it fun. so responsive you're so responsive and you're so willing to like share that's what i love about you yeah and i, I don't mind i was like this is how i would do it <laughs> yeah so one signing my lease really showed me that i can't be scared of rejection because the amount of no's you're gonna get before you get the yes but that's okay and for every no here comes a yes right mm -hmm. so i would probably go to i actually did it yesterday so I went to a winery, very well-known winery, and there was like the popular bartender. I walked up to her and I was like, do you want a facial? She's like, what? And I goes like, give me your phone. <laughs> and she goes, 
She goes, what? I said, give me your phone. I'm going to show you what I do. So oh she like, God, she was telling me her hands <laughs> are really dry, right? So I was like, oh, I know exactly what to do. Paraffin wax. So I was like, let me see your phone. So I, I follow myself. I DM myself from her Instagram account. You are so funny. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, come and get a facial. I was like, I promise you're going to love it. We're going to do a paraffin wax. You're going to do a massage, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, okay, yeah. So she's coming in next Wednesday. The reason why I'm so confident is because I feel like I've prepared myself to be confident. Mm -hmm. Like, I know she's going to come in and it's going to be like my job, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send her home with all these samples. And she's going to be like, that was awesome. And then I'm going to be like, hey, do you mind sharing my page on your stories? Yeah. So you targeted her or chose her because she was at a really popular winery. She's the bartender. So obviously she's talking to a bunch of different people all day long. And you offer a free service to her to come in, get the facial, give her free samples. And then, you know, at a later time, you're going to say, hey, do you mind sharing this on your social, sharing it with your friends, things like that? Correct. I also take it one step further and rebook them for four weeks. Ooh. And would that be free as well? Or what, what are no. your thoughts on that? Okay. So that's like a paid thing. Correct. Okay. I like that. I like that. So I'm thinking about like, I always think about my introverts, right? Because like, I know that the introvert in me when I'm feeling that way would be like, oh my gosh, I am not going to do that. But when I'm in my extroverted mindset and like all energetic, I am so down to do exactly what you just said. So for my <laughs> introverts who are just like cringe, I do not want to okay. do anything like that. What would you say is Literally, another way that they can do it? <laughs> I'm saying this story and I am cringing inside my body. I'm not going to lie. I am cringing. But this is what I say. If you're solo, you have a rent and you have expenses, you can't afford to be scared. You yeah. can't because mm -hmm. your weekly or monthly rent is going to come anyways. Mm -hmm. And this is where I learned that from. I'm in Studio City. So I could go to Air One right now and there's at least five celebrities in there. Mm. So I went to, you're familiar with Studio City? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's sugar on bronze on Ventura. Mm -hmm. And in there, it's like, everybody's there. So I'm sitting there and I talk to this girl. She has this gorgeous purple hair. And I'm like, oh my God, your hair's so pretty. It's like, cool, right? So I'm having a conversation with her. I was like, why does she look so familiar? Who is this? Keep going. It's Kelly Osborne. Oh my gosh, stop. <laughs> and uh, and that, we're having like a real, like me, like talking. We're talking about her hair and what people, blah, blah, blah. And I choked I was like, I was like, what do I do? Do I give her my, and I, that day I was like, never again am I going to choke because when do you just randomly want to run it to Kelly Osborne? Yeah. <laughs> I, I let the bare minimum shoot your shot. Mm -hmm. If you say no, fine. But at least like, you're proud that you did it. Why not? I always say closed mouths don't get fed. So nope. mm -hmm. and that's, I live, I was like, you don't get what you don't ask for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So fast. <laughs> have you heard of dose of color? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So I'm by the headquarters. <laughs> I was so upset that I choked on Kelly Osborne that I decided to print out Valentine's Day like flyers, right? And I'll actually show, send you the picture. And I was like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to offer every single person in Dosa had a uh, free facial. I just randomly opened the door to their headquarters. And I'm like, my name is Maria. I just opened up my suite in Studio City. It's like X amount from here. And I want to offer everybody a free facial. Nobody came. Oh my gosh. Um, which is so weird. Like, yeah. <laughs> so weird. I mean, I was probably just like so nervous that I was even in there, but it was me like ha having to push mm -hmm. out of that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I had to do it in an extreme way, but yeah. I was like, I drove by five times <laughs> before I went inside. You're like, should I actually do this? Okay. I'm I going, was, I'm going. <laughs> I was like, this is a ter terrible idea. Mm-hmm. No, it's but a great idea. I mean, I think like, so for me personally, like I was terrified to speak on stages, terrified. I was terrified of even like human interaction when I was in my twenties. That's why I partied so much because it didn't feel so heavy. Right. But now it's like, once I had a little bit of a taste of like expansion and like pushing myself to outside of my comfort zone, like the more that I crave it. So like now I love speaking on stages. Now I love jumping out of airplanes, like even though I'm terrified of heights, you know, like all of these things that allow me to grow as a person, I'm all about it. And so like, that's one of your moments where you're sitting there, like, should I actually go inside this place? Like there's so many, like, you know, people of influence in there, like whatever, and you did it. And so now like the next time you decide to do something like that, it's going to feel much easier than it did the first time. Right. 
And it's also like when you need clients, you need to do it. And one of the things that I really took away from her, she's like, you need to fight for your business. Yeah. So as wild as that sounds of me, like, I can't even believe I did that now. <laughs> walking into this place but i all i have to think about is i want to get anna and if mm -hmm. i get anna i know i'm going to get bookings mm -hmm. so that was my biggest thing so like say somebody if i was in a small town like kentucky or uh, fresno is where i grew up from mm -hmm. i would walk into i don't know like maybe where you kind of see like a lot of women socializing so even like like if there's like a soul cycle or a nice gym or something ask for the manager because i always it's not even necessarily the owners that i go it's who's going to cater to the work people right for sure yeah so it's like i would demand you like i would love to offer you a complimentary facial in exchange referrals and maybe some posts if you're cool with that and then they would be like who's gonna say no right to a facial yeah facials are great and honestly like that's so generous of you to be honest because that takes like an hour of your time at least right for us it's spray tanning it only takes us 15 minutes to do a spray tan so if you're, if Maria is doing it, if she's able to do this for an hour and dedicate this time to her clients and her influencers and the people that she's potentially collaborating with, we can also do this. And I think one of the things that comes up for me too, is like when I was starting my business, I was so naive and I was so like in this mode of like, Oh, I have to make money. I have to make money. So I made a ton of mistakes in terms of like not being so generous. So like, even for like my friends and stuff, you know, I would charge them or like, not, not saying that you should or shouldn't, it just depends on your situation. But I felt like there were points in my life, like when I worked with certain influencers or people, I should not have charged them. Now, looking back, I'm like, oh, like I cringe at it. So I want whoever's listening to like, let go of that resistance and like, maybe think about the return on your investment because your spray tan is going to cost you 15 minutes of your time, $5 from you, you know, it's just going to talk cost $5, right. but that one person could be a spider web of people that she like brings into your world. It's insane. The potential. So the quote that I always like live by, I guess, and I saw this way before I even was an esthetician. It was like, don't worry about money, worry about the work and the money will come. Mm -hmm. So if you are ready, so I would see it like this. If I already didn't have a client on Wednesdays and I'm supposed to be there on Wednesdays, I'm going to DM as many people as I need to, or walk into that grocery store and I'm going to fill it with three free clients. Yeah. And they're going to bring me three more. Yeah. I love it. Cause it's like the abundant mindset, right. Versus scarcity mindset. And that's kind of the, the perfect example <laughs> of what this is like having that abundant mindset, understanding that yes, like this is costing you. And I put that in quotations, like it's costing you this much right now, but the potential for you to grow because of that one person. And you were talking about it earlier, that one influencer brought so many other people. So cool. Do you believe in affirmations? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would always say like one, I, what I use is like, I'm a money magnet all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I always say, when I was like, people always love me. So mm -hmm. <laughs> when they come in, yeah. but then it was also like one that was, that I learned from Rhea, I'm worthy. So yeah. Like when these influencers would come in, I'm like, look, I studied, I have the best back bar and I invest in that heavily. So I'm ready and I'm worthy of a successful business. Mm -hmm. So versus like the rejection that I would think of, I would think, no, I'm worthy and I'm going to do this kick-ass facial and I'm going to get 20 off of this one. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you shift, like it's just insane how much more confident you show up and how many more opportunities are there available for you because you decided to be confident. You decided to step into dose of colors. You decided to do <laughs> the DMs, you know? So it's so cool because I think this talk right now is going to inspire so many women to get on their damn phones on Instagram and not scroll, but find like the right person to connect with and DM them and invite them into your world. Very cool. And you never knew who you're going to get. Like, so one of the girls who I wanted, it was a uh, her name is Sanine. She is, she just active wear. I can't think of her name right now, but I wanted her so bad. I DM'd her 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. And she finally booked an appointment on her own. Wow. That and is she came so in funny. And she's like, I was checking my DMs and you were trying to get me back in like 2019. And I was like, that's the power of like, I don't give up. Yeah, exactly. My lady, like I want to spray tan Carmen Electra so bad. I think I've asked her like twice already. I actually asked Pamela Anderson the other day. 
I was like, I'm just, I want to spray tan you guys so bad. Cause actually I just watched the documentary of Pamela Anderson. I wasn't like I did a huge fan this. of hers, but the last couple of documentaries that I've seen of her is like, or movies, documentaries, whatever. I just love her. I love, I love her, her energy. She's mm-hmm. great. So let's talk a little bit about how you transitioned from, you know, going into having like this space in this room, right? The treatment room into the online space. Now you have created the Money Making Estheticians Facebook group, and now you're working partially online and still in your face or in in your room as well, right? So what was that transition like and how has that impacted you as a business owner? Well, 2020, I mean, we were home, Mm -hmm. you know, so it was just like, I started the Facebook group and it was just me. Like I was making up my own posts, like maybe for about a year and nobody was in there. (laughs) Like I was just making up posts and the post that I was doing was basically teaching the girls like how to break down money. So it's like, if you make $500 a day, that's how you get to 10,000. And it was like, I remember being in my first Facebook group and seeing I was like, you can make $10,000 in a month. Like that's doctor money. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know that, that was possible. Like I was trying to make probably $3,500 a month. Like, and I was happy. And then I saw 10,000. So then I start researching, like, how do you do that? And so everything that I was kind of, I kind of live like what, my group, I'm doing it for either my younger self, or my current self. So a lot of the times it's like, as I'm, cause I take so many classes <laughs> as I'm learning, I am sharing Mm -hmm. in this class. So it's even real questions. Like I'm like, okay, where do I get my Brazilians? Then all of a sudden, all the questions are Brazilians, like Brazilian thingies. And so then that's when I found Libby because I was literally looking for a Brazilian class. Even though I did European wax and I I always think it's important to like retouch. Mm -hmm. So I was, that's what I found Libby because I was actually taking, wanted to take a Brazilian course. I wanted Mm -hmm. to take and an intimate lightning course. So that's when I found her, get the course, take it. And then I'm excited. So now I'm DMing her. And then I'm like, hey, Libby, do you want to collaborate in my group? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a Facebook group. You know, I had like, I think at the time it was 82,000 people. And it was a Facebook group was, was such a foreign concept. To, so it's still very foreign. Mm-hmm. People are like, what are you talking about? And people are like, and then I was like, you have to join the community because you're not going to get it until you join. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh my gosh, like this is so fun. There's like real people in here. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Like I wish I had that or known about that when I first started because the Facebook groups are truly like such a blessing. I mean, they can be a little bit of a curse, but for the most part, if you have good admins and good moderators in there, like the groups are so invaluable and so amazing. And especially for newbies who are coming uh-huh. in, like if you guys are listening right now and you guys are struggling with like, I don't know, marketing, business, growth, whatever, these Facebook groups are just like, there's no reason why you shouldn't succeed. That's, I'll, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> Literally. I was, I was obsessed with Facebook groups even before mine mm-hmm. with different ones. So like I learned how to do keto. I was in the LA mommies. I don't know if you've heard of LA mommies out here. Mm-hmm. So it's one of the biggest Facebook groups out here. The admin is actually one of my clients. And so like, that's another way I was like network, you know, yeah. oh, really quick with her. Like I got her in. So it was me being extremely persistent. Mm. So that's another don't if you want someone don't give up (laughs) i think that's like such a good point too it's like admins of facebook groups in our community and our like temecula's where i live i reach out to them all the time and like we i've had good connections i don't they're not as big as la for sure or like new york or san diego but in your small little community you could still find like admins who are influential in your space so it's good to reach out to them so i reached out to libby and i was like hey do you want to like collab but I would really just loved her class. And it turns out that she has like the second biggest Facebook, huge Facebook group. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like, she's like, how have we not known about each other? And I was like, but that just shows me that the industry is ever growing and there's still yeah. so much more to go. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was just, so I was obsessing over Facebook groups and I, I was like, I would tell everybody like the Facebook group is a plug. Like if there is an interest, there is a Facebook group for that. Oh, for sure. 1000%. And I was showing so much value. And so all the value that I would get excited, I was putting into my own group. I'm a, I'm a Leo mm-hmm. who are very passionate <laughs> is what I hear anyways. <laughs> But I've always been, like, I'm very, like, enthusiastic and I'm excited and I'm, like, ready to hit the ground running every day. And even in the group, like, I wake up, no joke, between five and six and I'm in there till seven. Then I'm like, okay, I have to get my daughter up. So I'm like, Mia, let's get up. Let's go. But submissions, I get between two and 300 questions a day. Yeah, that's insane. And I'm like, approve, deny. 
(laughs) (laughs) It's so crazy because I don't think anybody realizes unless you have your own Facebook group, how much work it is to have and run a Facebook group. And that's why, like, I mean, I've definitely taken people out of our Facebook group who just are not the nicest people or the people that have problems with me. I'm like, I don't need your energy in my home right? Like I don't need negative energy. If you're talking poorly to somebody else, I'm just going to remove you. And I'm not going to have a conversation with you because we have too many other things, Maria, to, to be worrying about like babysitting these people. So the fact that like, yeah, we have like 11,000 in our group, you have 80 something thousand is so mind. And, and Maria, you're a mom and you don't have help with the group right now, which I was like, on you about like last week when we talked, I was like, you need somebody in there because it's taking so much of your time. But the great thing that you found through going into this online space was the power of collaborating online. So now your reach is like massive. It's obviously global. You can reach out to brands and people who are interested in collaborating with you and like actually, you know, monetize it. So I think that's really, really cool too. Thinking outside the box, getting creative, you know, people just don't realize like the potential now that we have the internet (laughs) and Wi-Fi, like the potential for anybody to become a millionaire or more is like crazy good compared to what it was just a couple years ago, even. Because it's funny when I when I think of like, you know, millionaire or whatever, and as wild as it sounds, because obviously more money, more problems, more responsibility, right? And when I created the group, I wasn't necessarily trying to help girls make be millionaires. I was trying to help them be six figures. But I was also like, for example, me or whatever a woman decides to choose to be, mm-hmm. I volunteer at my kid's school twice a week. And I am like, they're like today. a lot of energy. <laughs> I don't actually. <laughs> I don't. It, it really comes from passion. It's yeah. everything I do. I do it because I love it. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm just a very excited person, I guess. I don't yeah. know. But like, so today, as soon as you and I are done, I'm going to go and I clean her classroom every Friday. Oh my you know? God. I love that. But it's because I just love her so much. And my parents had the finances to let me live the life that I want, but they didn't have the time. Right. And I like, and I, to me, I was like, I want to create a life to where I can make a certain amount of money to pay my expenses. Like, it doesn't even have to be a lavish life, but I want to mm-hmm. be comfortable. And I want to be able to volunteer at my kid's school because you don't get that back. Mm-hmm. And at every, every milestone, I'm like soaking up because I'm like, oh, I love this, you know? And during COVID, I was like, when we come out of this, because we're going to, I'm going to take as many classes as I can right now. And so I was already doing spreadsheets. Like I was like, this is the ultimate spreadsheet or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like emailing it to all the girls. So I was already helping them anyways. Mm -hmm. And I was a moderator for a group, another group, and they didn't want to do it my way. And I also didn't want to step on toes. So I was going to open up my own. But when I was thinking about my the girl, right? I think of my girl because I think it's like, I work, I have to drop her off at eight o'clock. I need to be out by two. Who's going to hire me? Yeah. Nobody. Mm-hmm. Nobody's right. So it's like, I think of the girl and it's like, if you guys make, I don't know, $200 per client, and then you learn how to do retail, and then you rebook, you're making good money to at least pay mm-hmm. your expenses and volunteer once a week. Yeah. And sustainability. Like if you can do that consistently and sustainable with less stress like you're winning you know absolutely yeah and I think you you hit it like right on the head like don't just settle for that $50 spray tan get retail involved get them rebooked because that $50 spray tan just walked out if you didn't do those things versus creating like a hundred dollar ticket for that one client in 15 minutes plus rebooking them for the next you know $50 appointment and that's why I teach the girls in the group yeah like if you notice I'm like the power of retail every interview I was I'm so passionate about retail for so many different reasons and you need to rebook and yeah. so you're literally throwing up so those free clients that i have come in they all go home with samples they all come back in four weeks they actually buy the entire kit when they come back so mm-hmm. that's like 250 bucks plus the 150 dollars, and then they rebook and they're my client and they're referring mm-hmm. yep yeah i love that And people, I think a lot of artists, they make the mistake of like assuming that people don't have money because there's a recession or there's going to be a recession or whatever, right? So like we have sometimes in our head, we're like, oh, I don't want to ask her like to buy retail because I know like she is a mom and like she's a single mom and she doesn't have money. But like you don't know somebody's financial status. You just don't. You don't know Maria's financial status. You don't know my financial status. So like for I look like a bum half the time of my life. So like when I went into the Mercedes dealer and like paid for my car, 
car or like the Jaguar dealer and paid it in cash. Like I did it because they didn't make me feel like I didn't deserve it or that I couldn't afford it. But let me tell you, when I did go to Mercedes, I went to a couple different dealers because they did treat me like crap. Like I wasn't worthy or that I couldn't afford it. So like they didn't even want to waste their time, not knowing that I had the funds to do that, you know? So I went to San Diego and I finally found somebody that was actually treating me well. So take that as like a learning lesson. Don't assume somebody's financial status just because of the way they look or because they might look younger or older or like whatever, because you just never, ever know who's walking through your door. I agree with you. It's also what do people value, Yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So I might not have the money for a Mercedes, but I have money for skincare. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And this is what I, I talk about. If you're not giving them product, you're doing them a disservice because they're going to leave straight to Target and go get face wash because they need face wash, yeah, period. Absolutely. A thousand percent. It doesn't matter like what economic status you're in. You need to wash your face. Yeah, <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Right. But it's like, do you have the verbiage and the skill set to tell your clients why this face wash and this ingredients is better? And that's what I teach in the group. And that's yeah. why I'm trying to give them that confidence. Because and if you're not giving them retail and they're not buying from you, it's because they don't trust you. One. Mm-hmm. Two, they probably don't trust you because you don't have the knowledge. And you, if you have the skill set and the confidence, you know, like, for example, a full 29 bucks skin script, green tea. I know from the top of my head, mm-hmm. they're going to buy it. $30, yeah. They're like, $30, you're going to go to McDonald's and spend that. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that like perspective. You know, I love that. I was thinking about that. Actually, I had a conversation with my girl, Claudia, earlier today. She's like, yeah, somebody left us a review on for X hand salon and said that the service was great, but that it was too expensive. I was like, that's so interesting. I was like thinking about my own life. I was like, it's obviously all perspective, right? Like somebody who thinks a spray tan, a $50, $60 spray tan is too expensive is because they don't value it. They don't see like the benefit of having it. Whereas like, I'm like that with Brazilians because I just shave and like, I don't need a Brazilian. I know that's like TMI for a lot of you guys, but like, I just shave, I don't need a Brazilian. So even $2 for a Brazilian would be too much for me because I just don't need it. Right. So it's just so funny, like what we perceive as being valuable. So if anybody's ever telling you that you're too much or that your retail's too much or anything like that, like keep that in mind. It's not about you or your pricing. It's about what they're perceived or their perception of like whatever service or product is that you have. And I think about like Jimmy Coco, he's actually by you. He I charged- DM'd him actually. Did you? <laughs> A lot. Oh my gosh, he's great. Three hundred dollars for a freak, or it's like two eighty or something. But three hundred dollars for a freaking spray tan. Like you go, Jimmy Coco. Yes, <laughs> and that and he's busy and he makes it and he does it and he makes it work because he knows who his ideal client is. He's in the right location, but also because he values who he is and like his total energy. <laughs> so. I love that. Well, I want to thank you so much for this conversation because I think it's going to be so powerful for women who are listening and you guys who are listening, you know, get into your DMs, find somebody that you want to collaborate with, reach out to them and just do it scared. It's all good. Do it scared. scared. Miss Maria, if somebody wants to connect with you, how can they find you? The Beauty Plug by Maria on IG. I answer every DM. And then there's also the Money Making Esthetician on Instagram, which I also answer every DM. And then the Facebook group where I answer every DM. Literally, I don't know how you do it i just don't (laughs) i just put a lot of time on my phone (laughs) oh my gosh well thank you so much for your advice your expertise and i'm so glad that we've been able to connect because i know that we have over the last couple years but i love like interviewing women like you who i've been connected with for a long time and it's just so cool to hear your story oh thank you for having me of course thank you guys so much for listening to the beauty business based podcast we will see you next week 